and, and squeezing on folks and giving people what they need and wanting to be a blessing to other people. It, it, it's difficult when you feel under pressure. And the Lord was showing me that you have been under pressure. Amen. Amen. And it has been stifling your love. Mm. The atmosphere that is in this room right now is the atmosphere that there should always be. Thank you. Mm. Mm. That's what the Lord showed me. And that he showed me this as I was studying his word in the book of Colossians. And I began to read through the book of Colossians. I said, God, why do you have me reading this book? I've read this book over and over again. I mean, is there anything special that, that, that you want to show me? Thank you. And he began to show me Thank you. that this church is much like that church. That there is such a love here that we can almost get caught up in the wrong things and it becomes a distraction to what God really wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he really wants his people loving him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and loving each other. Yes. That's really what he wants. There's a lot of other things that people add to it. Yes, yes. But really the, the, the greatest of all the commandments is what? To love. love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then he said the second commandment is equal to that commandment, that you love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so there are some things that stifle your love. Uh -huh. There are some things that get in the way of your love. Yes. And you want to make sure that you're not allowing these things to get in the way of what God wants to do in your life. Mm -hmm. I want to give honor to God and to the leadership of this household. I want to appreciate the opportunity to speak here. Uh, it's always a blessing and it's always an honor. And in Colossians chapter 1 and beginning at verse 9, I want you to hear me. I'm, as we read these words, I want you to hear this as if the Apostle Paul were standing here talking to the Colossian church and you being divine temple that we that God is talking to you and so I want you as you read this to picture the Apostle reaching out to you and talking to you can you do that for me can you use your spiritual imagination and go to the first century and imagine sitting in the household of God and the letter to the Colossians is being read before you. Because that's what it would have looked like. They didn't have a full Bible. They had the letter mm -hmm. to the Colossians. And so when, as I read this, I want you to hear the heart of God. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And this is the truth. I pray for you guys all the time. There are a few churches that I go and I visit outside of my own church. And I pray for those churches because God has given me a relationship with them. And I have a love and a care for them. And so I pray for them. And just as he says here, I do not cease to pray for you. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. One of the things that keeps us from doing everything that God wants us to do is that we don't have a full knowledge of his will and we don't have spiritual understanding. All right. Talk about it. If people understood more, you wouldn't have to beg them or ask them to do things that the Bible easily tells them to do. Because they have a knowledge of his will and they have spiritual understanding. You can know something with your mind, but if you don't have a revelation of it, you can't really get to it. You won't really do it. Once you have a revelation that God is a healer, you don't have any problem praying for healing. When you have a revelation that God is a deliverer, then you don't have a problem praying for deliverance. That's right. Yeah. When you, have a re when you have a revelation that God will bless your life, then you don't have a problem of giving. Mm -hmm. I'm a giver everywhere I go because I have a revelation that no matter where I go, I know God's going to bless me. Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of me. He has taken care of me, and he will always take care of me. And before I even gave anything, he took care of me, so why can't I give him something? That's right. When you have a revelation, when you have spiritual understanding of why you need to be in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you fight to get in here. 
And it's moments like this that once you get through the door, man, I'm glad I came. How many would say, I'm glad I came this morning. I was going to stay home. I was going to do something different. But the Lord wants you to understand his will. He wants you to understand spiritually what it is that he desires. And a lot of times we miss God because we don't have a revelation of what it is that he's trying to get to us. And so my prayer is that you are filled with an understanding of God's will. Filled. Filled. That when you open the Bible to read, you open it up with an understanding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you sing a song, yes, you yes. sing the song with an understanding. Yes. Paul said, I will pray with tongues and I will pray in my understanding. He said, I will sing with tongues, but I also will sing with an understanding. Right. And so without an understanding, the Bible says that my people perish for their lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the job of, of, of us leaders is to make sure you understand it. So my prayer is that you have spiritual wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. But not only that. All right, all right. That you would begin, verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, mm -hmm. fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work. Mm -hmm. To walk worthy of the Lord is one of the things that is fundamental. And you say, what does it mean to be worthy? Let, 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 me, let me make sure that you understand this. The, the Bible says that we should not be, or we should be aware of those that might cheat us mm -hmm. with philosophy mm -hmm. and empty deceit, mm -hmm. traditions of men, mm -hmm. according to the principles of man, and not according to Christ. Uh -huh. What we have to understand is that I've got to cut out all the junk yes, and yes. focus on pleasing God. Right? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, some, some folks may want you to jump through hoops and do all this different other stuff. You ought to just say, I want to please God. Right? Yes, yes. Every time I walk through this door, I want to please God. Right? Yes. Every time I lift my hands, I want it to glorify God. Every time I sing a song, I want it to glorify God. It may not be the song that somebody else wants me to sing. Right, right, right. But my goal is to glorify God. And as I glorify God, God will give me the understanding of what I should be doing. But I need to have the focus on pleasing the Lord. Yes, yes. And I have to walk worthy of that. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means to, to him that knows to do good. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And doesn't do it to that man oh, is sin. Yes. And so I can't count it sin if you don't even know about it. Come on now. But what you know. Yes, Nudge yes. Now your neighbor and say, what you know? What you know. Go talk to him and say, what you know? What you know. You are held accountable for that. Mm-hmm. The mm -hmm. stuff I don't know, yes. I'll, I'll learn that later on. I'll, yes. I'll get to that sooner or later. I'll grow to that level at some point. But I'm held accountable to walk worthy of what pleases God to the point that I know it. Yes, 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 yes. There are some things that I know now uh -huh, that uh -huh. I didn't know. A long time ago. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The Bible says when I was a child, yes. I thought like a child. Come on, I, yes. I spoke as yes. a child. Yes. But when I became a man, Come on. I put away childish things. That means there's a progression where you grow up in Christ. Come on now. Yes. You may start at one place. One of the things that I was I was talking to the Lord about is that God, when I walk in here, uh -huh, uh huh. I like to look and see who's grown since the last time I came. Home. Yes, come on now, come on. See, I uh, I don't know how many times we come, but however many times I may not know exactly what you're doing. Mm hmm. But I look to see yes, if yes, you're growing. Uh -huh. Yes. I look to see if you are more built up and established in your faith. I look to see if your heart is more connected to the Lord. You know how you test if somebody's growing? Mm, come on now. You test to see how much thanksgiving is in their heart. Right. Because the more you know about God, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. the more thankful you are. Right. Yes. The more you understand how much he's blessing you. Come on now. The more praise comes out of your mouth. Yes. The more you understand that he's blessing you in spite of you, you yes. have a worship and a praise yes. that is so different from everybody else because yes. it's not about them, it's about you and God. And you yes. feel like, God, I owe you this. I owe you this praise. Jesus. And so with everything, I'm going to bless your name. Yes, yes. 
Yes. Because I know how far you bring. They may not Jesus. know. Yes, Any, Lord. Anybody know folks judge you and they don't really know. Yes, that's they, right. They don't that's know. Right. That they don't know how far you've grown. They don't know what level you are on. They don't know that you started at negative five. Right, right. And you just made it to five. All they see is, oh, you're only on level five. Bless you. Yes, yes. But listen to me. He wants you to walk worthy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the Lord. Come on now. Fully pleasing Him. You know what pleases God? Yes. Your love for Him? Yes. Because your love for Him will cause you to make sacrifices and changes in your life. Not what people want. Come on now. Yes. One of the things I tell my church all the time, I say, you know what? Stop doing stuff for me. Come on. Yes. Don't come to church because of me. Yes. Don't serve because of me. Right. Don't sing because of me. Yes. Because I am not sufficient motivation. That's right. Come on. Because now. one day I'm a, I'm gonna make you mad. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. One day you're not gonna like me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. One day you you you're gonna look at me. Oh, I'm tired of him. Right. But if your motivation is to please the Lord, then that bypasses me. Right. Yes, it does. Yes. That'll make me act right even when you act wrong. Yes. That'll make me love you even when you hate me. Mm -hmm. That'll make me do right even when others around me are acting funny and acting shady. And acting, I'll do right because I love the Lord and I won't take it back. Amen. Yes. Because my goal is to please God. Tell, turn around and tell somebody my goal is to please God. I don't know about you. See, you got to confess that out of your mouth. My yes. goal is to please God. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That, that, that's what I came to do. I didn't, I didn't come to please man. Come on now. Because I can't please men. Yes. Oh, yeah. Tell the truth. Try to please people. Come on. Woo! You're going to be jumping through all kinds of hoops and still not getting it done. Yes, yes, yes. Your goal is to please God because at least I can look in his word and say, okay, this is what I need to do. With people, I don't know what I need to do. Right. Because one day I need to do this and the next day I need to do that. And the next day I just can't win. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, yes. So he said that you may walk worthy of the Lord, mm -hmm. fully pleasing him, and being fruitful in every good work. I like this part. Come on now. We're going to walk through this thing. Yes, right? let's walk through. Take your time. You're going to walk through the scripture and just break it down. Break it down. Yes. I'm going to chop it up like, like, like you did for your, your little kids. Remember you used to uh, chop up their waffles and cut up their food yeah. so that they can bite size. That's what we're going to do today. Mm-hmm. He said, be fruitful yes. in every good work. Mm -hmm. To bear fruit means to grow. Mm. That's really what it means. Yes. yes. It means that I am producing something. Come on now. That you begin to see mm -hmm. more love in my life. Mm -hmm. You begin to see joy yes. in my life. Yes, yes. You begin to see more kindness, uh -huh. gentleness. You begin to see self-control. Mm. See, some folks get in trouble... Because they go off of what man's traditions and philosophies are, mm -hmm. and they forget that God wants to see fruit. Right. Mm hmm Yes. Yes, he does. I, I could dress real nice. Yes, he does. But if I walk out here cussing people out, uh -uh. this suit ain't fruit. Right. Come on now. Come on now. Y'all hear me? Yes. As nice as it is, it's not fruit. Yes. This suit don't make me holy. Yes, that's right. This tie don't make me righteous. It's what's going on inside of me and that what you see come out of me that says, oh, he's walking with the Lord. Yes, yes. Because he said walk worthy. Walk worthy. Yes, he did. Some people think, oh, man, you, 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 you just, you just got to believe me. No. What's the fruit? Right, right. What Last do I see? Last week, you couldn't control yourself. This week, you're doing a better job. That's yes, true. that's fruit. Progress. Last time I saw you, man, you didn't want to give nobody nothing. Now I see you giving and being generous and, yeah. and just loving on people. That's making progress. That's bearing fruit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many people want to, well, it's just, it's, just, it's just me and God and nobody else is supposed to know what's going on. No, you're supposed to bear some fruit. Uh -huh. People are supposed to begin to notice yeah. that you're changing. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, First Timothy uh, chapter 4 and verse 15, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, he says, Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely over to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Evident to all. Yes. Yes. So people ought to see me grow? Yes. Amen. How, how many got, how many, how many raised kids in this room? 
Didn't you see them grow? Yes, huh? yes, you did, yes. Man, I saw my son go from here to up here. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was evident. <laughs> I remember when he finally told me, he said, Dad, I got you now. <laughs> he stood next to me. I, <laughs> I got you. It's evident. Yeah. That's what he told me. I, my daughter saw a picture of us standing together. Yeah, Dad, he's got you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's evident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Anybody want to walk in such a way that there's evidence? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Or do you just want to go to church? And look like somebody. If I dress real nice, won't nobody know that I'm my heart is black. No. Huh? If I say all the right stuff, if I do all the form and fashion, won't nobody know? No. Somebody ought to know, right? <laughs> somebody ought to know. Somebody ought to be able to say, nah, that brother that brother's different than he was. He may not be where he's gonna be. Right, right. But at least He's not where he, he was. Yes. Yeah, and see, that ought to be your test is that I, I may not have made it all the way. Uh-huh. But every time you see me, I tell our church week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, mm-hmm. you ought to be growing. Come on now. There, there are not get to a point where you're, uh, I'm done growing. No, you're not. Right, no, right. You're not. The Bible says from glory to glory yes. by the Spirit of God that we are supposed to be changing and transforming. Every time we pick up the Word, we learn something that challenges us to do better. Yes. Come on now, yes. Yes. We, t- turn around and tell your neighbor, somebody got to challenge you. Somebody, somebody got to challenge you. Folks can't just be scared of you all the time. Somebody got to challenge you and say, grow. In Jesus' name, grow. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm not asking you to be bishop. I'm not asking you to be the first lady. I'm not. I'm just asking you to grow from where you are Come on. to another level. Come on. Yes. That's yes. what it means to be fruitful. Yes. Yes, it does. He adds to fruitful <laughs> yes. and every good work, increasing. Come on now. What is incre- increasing means you're growing. Yes. It means you're developing. Uh-huh. Yeah, this yes. walk with God is a journey. Yes. You don't just wake up one day and have it all. Yeah. Some Come people on. quit going to church because they didn't wake up Sunday and had it all. Come on now. Amen. Come on. It may take you a thousand Sundays to just get one thing, but you ought to keep growing. You ought to keep going until you get it. Come on yeah. now, yes. And yes. folks ought to look at you and say, you know, you're doing a little bit better. Yes, yes. You know, that's why you need encouraging folks around you. To, like Paul, he's saying, man, I'm praying for you guys. Yes, man. yes. That you grow in the Lord. Come on that now. That you increase, that you develop, because I know it's hard, but you need to keep growing. I see it. Come on, yeah. yes. You need folks around you say, I, I, I see some change in you. Uh-huh, yeah. Not, oh, you, you, just, you, just, you just ain't saved. <laughs> huh? There's some folks that no matter what you do, you ain't saved. Uh-oh. Come on now. Yes. They yes. got all kinds of ways to put you in hell. Uh-huh. Why, are you, why are you always trying to throw me in hell? Mm-hmm. You got that green tile and you're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> this brother, he, he, man, he look like springtime. You're going to hell. <laughs> You look too good up there. You you look too clean and happy. You no. No, no you need folks that say yeah, you, you're doing a lot better. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. How many need a little encouragement? Amen. Yes. That's yes. the thing that the Lord showed me. When you have people that are tender-hearted, come on. The best way to reach them is to encourage them. Come on. Now, when you got stiff-necked. Yes. Rebellious, uh, hard-hearted folks. Yes. Well, you gotta, you gotta put your foot in their butt. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta talk. You gotta get on them. But when you got people that 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 soft-hearted and they're loving, you encourage them. All of a sudden, they'll start blossoming. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You got hard-headed folks. You, you, man, you gotta fight fire with fire. Like all right. 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 The Lord told the prophets. He said, "You dealing with a stubborn, stiff-necked." group of people, yes. set your face like a flint. Yes. Don't even smile, don't crack a smile, nothing, just 
Right. The Lord said. Yeah. Yes, that's right. When you're dealing with soft-hearted people that love folks, you got to look at them and say, you know what? You guys are doing wonderful. Yes, come on now. You're doing a lot better than you were before. Mm -hmm. And every time I see you, it looks like you're growing a little bit. I've heard great things about your faith and your godliness and how you're growing. Into, th that's the kind of stuff Paul would write. If you study the New Testament, the letters that he wrote always started off with an encouragement. Yes, they huh? did. How my Bible scholars? Yes. Huh? Yes. It always started off with encouragement. I'm glad to see you from Paul and Timothy and your brothers from around the world. We just heard great things about you. Grace be unto you. Yeah. And then he get in. Mm -hmm. But he started out with an encouragement. Yes. And that's what this is. This is an encouragement. Yeah. Come on now. Increasing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you increased? In your knowledge of the Lord. Yes, yes. Are you still where you've been? You still in the same spot that you've been at? Come on. You see, you can't stay there too long. Mm -hmm. Because anything that's not growing is dying. Yes. When a pond is stagnant, that's where bacteria begins to develop. Mm -hmm. But when water is flowing and moving, mm -hmm. there's life in there. Yes. As a matter of fact, you can't drink water that's in a pond and it's stagnant. Yes. Ooh, you be messed up. But if the river's flowing, man, you can drop your little cup in there and get some fresh water. Because fresh water is flowing water. Yes, it is. Yes, and it is. And so people who are really living for God should be flowing. Come on. They should be increasing. Yes. They should be growing. Mm -hmm. You may have started sitting on the pew. Yes. Next thing you know, you're ushering at the door. Uh, yeah. Next thing you know, maybe you're greeting, or maybe you're teaching a children's class, or maybe you, you start teaching Sunday school, to, or maybe you're going, you, you, you're becoming a deacon. But you are growing and you're moving. Some people, they get stuck just going to church. Mm -hmm. And they wonder why they backslide. Right, right. They wonder why they stop going, because you're not flowing. All right. Turn around and tell your neighbor, keep it flowing. Keep it flowing, keep, keep it flowing. It flowing. I mean, give them a look. Keep it flowing. Keep, Keep it, it flowing. flowing. Don't get stagnant. Mm -hmm. You need to be increasing. Yes, That's yes. That's what the word said. I didn't say it. Yeah. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might. Mm -hmm. Woo! I like this part. Because how many get weary? Oh, yes. Tell how many truth. get tired? Come on, come on. How many feel like your strength is low at times? Uh -huh. He said, I'm praying that you be strengthened with all might. That everything that you need to accomplish what God is calling you to do, that you would have. Yes, Lord. See, that's the grace of God. Uh -huh. And see, that's what, oh God, that's what it means to encourage somebody is to strengthen them. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Encouragement will strengthen your heart. Come on now. Encouragement will make you feel like you can do something that previously you thought you couldn't do anymore because you were too tired or too weak. But somebody comes along and encourages you. All of a sudden, you can go a little bit longer. You can take on a little bit more. You can do a little bit more than what you were doing in the past. You just need a little strength. Come on now. Yes. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say, Lord, give me a little strength. Give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Lord. Where are the folks that need some strength? Lord, give me a little strength. I, just, yes. I don't want to grow weary yes. in doing good. Lord, I want to reap in due season. Lord, strengthen me. Yes. Yes. Y'all know how to pray for strength. Yes. So, I mean, y'all don't have to wait on me. Lord, strengthen my body. Strengthen my mind. Strengthen my resolve. Strengthen me from the core of me. Yes, Lord. Yes. Woo. I need strength. strength. Yeah. There are just days where that's my only prayer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a whole elaborate speech to God. I don't have uh, uh, the, the, the scriptural uh, 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 theology or philosophy. I just, Lord, strengthen me. Mm, yes, Woo! Lord. And I'll feel the strength of God come on me. Yes, yes. I didn't know all the right words. Anybody ever been there? Yes, come on now. We were in prayer school. They had a school and it was called the prayer school, and he talked about bullet prayers. Yes, Y'all don't yes. know about bullet prayers. Oh. Yes. Bullet prayers are when you just shoot up one word. Oh. Yes, yes. Help. <laughs> yes. God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what? Just the bullet. Lord. Lord. <laughs> Strength. Yes. yes. Peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't know how to pray like that. <laughs> you know, sometimes the best prayer is a one-word marksman prayer. you like a sniper on the roof. 
Yes, yes. Peace! Yeah. Woo! Hey, God, I needed that. That's exactly <laughs> what I needed. You hit it right on the button. Joy! Yes, uh, yes. Anybody ever be in a place where you're joy? Yes, Lord. It's just, it ain't, it ain't joy. Mm, it's mm. flipped around this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's how you say it. It's joy. <laughs> it ain't joy. It's backwards. It's you, sometimes, Lord, joy. Joy. Mm. joy. Because you know why that's a good prayer? Mm. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's sometimes it's because you, you're just too sad. Uh -huh. you too, you too down. you too depressed. And you need some joy. And if you got some joy in your life, you would be a lot more strong. Uh -huh. Yes. To be yes. out of heaven. The Bible says a wounded spirit cannot bear. Mm. But a lifted spirit, oh God, if, you, if your spirit gets lifted, some of the stuff that was real difficult. Yes, yes, yes. All of a sudden, it's not so difficult anymore. Well, come on now. Some of the stuff that you was ready to give up, man, I'm done. Yeah. Yes. I, I just can't do it no more. You ever been there? Yeah. I just can't, I can't do it no more. I'm, I'm. Come on now. your spirit get lifted. Uh -huh. Yes. All of a sudden, you're like, yeah. Yes, yes. So I, yeah, I can do all things. Yes. I'm more than a conqueror yes. to him that loves ye yea in all these things. Uh -huh. He said, what shall we say? Uh -huh. You ever get a situation in your life where something comes at you and you don't know what to say? Mm -hmm. I'm coming down there. Uh-oh. <laughs> Listen, there are going to be times in your life mm -hmm. where stuff happens mm -hmm. that you don't know what to say. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. And the Bible says, what shall we say to these things? Mm -hmm. If God Grandma. be for me, Ooh, will you hand in some Kleenex? then who can be against me? Yes. There's some stuff yes. that comes at you mm -hmm. that if you don't speak back. Come on now. Yes. Come if on. you don't say, nope, I'm not quitting. Uh -huh. I I'm not giving up. Thank you. I, I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let you win. Mm-hmm. We're the married folks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ever been to that point? Yes. Of marriage? Yeah. yeah. Come on, y'all can be real. Yes. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> I keep it real. I keep it real. Where you felt like I can't I can't take it. I can't mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. And you remember what you told the Lord. Uh-huh. You remember that now. Nah, God, I said, till death do us part. Mm -hmm. I said, I love this person. So I'm not going to give up. But I want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that's where you need to be strengthened. Yes, yes, With it is. all might. Yes. You got to know that that's a good prayer. Come on now. God, strengthen me. Mm-hmm. Because right now I feel weak. Yes. Because the Bible says that in your weakness. Yes. His strength. Yes. It's made perfect. Yes. Come on. Now you don't realize how strong God is until you're weak. Yes. So many, so, so many of us want to be strong. Come on. We want to pretend like we're strong. Yeah. We want, I got it. I'm okay. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm good. When people tell me they're good, I give them a long look. Because <laughs> good is code for I'm barely making it. But I don't want you to know. Well, how you doing, man? I'm good. What? You good? What does that mean? That, that just means I'm good. No. That means you're hanging on by a thread. Uh -huh. And you need God to strengthen you, yeah, you with all might. Right. Mm. Because if you stay good too long, good turns to bad. Right, right, and right. And by the time we figure out what was so bad... You already done made some choices and decisions. You done walked away from something. You done walked away from a marriage. You done quit a job. You done moved out of your house. You done did all kinds of things because you're telling people you're good. Come on I'm now. I'm speaking right now. Y'all yes. looking at me funny, but no. I know I'm in the right place. Yes, you are. You're telling folks you're good, but you're on the verge. Come on. Yes. You're on the verge of making a decision that's not so good. Yes, yes, yes. You need to be strengthened. Come on now. Come on. With all my Yes. You need to be strengthened mm -hmm. with all my. You need to be strengthened by God. Yes. And God will give. He'll be your strength. Yes, He will. Yes, He, he will. He'll be your strength. Yes, He will. He'll build you up in places where you thought you were gonna give up. Uh huh. Somehow you still don't. 
Yes. Somehow you still got a song. Yes. Somehow you still got to pray. Yes. You say, why am I still praying? Because God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And his mercy endures forever. Yes, it does. And you know you owe him. Yeah. You know he's blessed you. Yes. Beyond measure. Uh huh. You know the fact that you're sitting here is the blessings of God. Yes. And so no, nothing short of God, thank you. Mm hmm. Will you get? Yes. Listen. I'm just about wrapping up right here. He says that you be strengthened with all might. But not only that, that you would give thanks to God. People don't understand how powerful your thank you is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the weapons that we have That's right. is our worship. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That when we get, the, here's how the Bible says it. In everything. Yes. Give thanks. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Yeah. In everything. 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 That doesn't mean that everything is good. Uh, doesn't mean everything is good for everything. Right. But in everything, mm -hmm. in the good days, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the bad days, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I feel good, thank you. Mm -hmm. And when I feel bad, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When my strength is small, thank you. Yes. And when it's great, thank you. Yes. When I got all the money I need to pay all the bills I got, thank you. And when I'm short, thank you. Okay. Yes. See, so y'all don't know how to get everything. Give thanks. Get everything. Everything. Not just the stuff that looks good. See, you don't want to be a fair weather set. Right, right. And only thank God when things go good. Okay. Uh-huh. Because you wouldn't want anybody to do you like that. Right. right. Uh, well, you know, I, I tell husbands and wives, what, what, what if your, your husband or your wife, they only said I love you when you did stuff for them? Yeah. Mm. Eventually, you would feel like you're being used. Yeah. Mm. Eventually, you feel like you're being abused. Yeah. And what are we going to do God like that? If Come we on. wouldn't want to be done like that, why would God, only when you, well, only when you do something for me, uh -huh. only when the check's in the mail, thank you, hallelujah, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what about when they tell you they lost the check? Uh -huh. And you still, still say, God, thank you. I know you're still working. <laughs> Where are them folks at? <laughs> you can always tell when stuff is going good in people's life because they come in with a shout. You're supposed to come in with a thank you no matter what's going on. Right. Because even if he don't do it, he still deserves thanks. Yes, he does. Well, y'all don't know nothing about that. Yes. Y'all, y'all, you, you got that feeling. What have you done for me lately, God? Yeah. Mm. I wish I would. I said this, and I kid you not. I said this, and a pastor looked at me and said, Brother, you don't want to say that. I said, You know what? If God doesn't do one more thing in my life, I'm thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I said, Well, you don't want to say that. Because you might be cutting off your blessing. No. As a matter of fact, I'm positioning myself mm -hmm. for blessing. Yeah. Right. Because right. if God knows I'm not greedy, come on. Then He'll pour it all on me. Uh -huh. Yes. Because that's what He's looking for. Yeah. Somebody that don't need all this stuff. Yes. That yes. He can bless and say, you know what? I'm gonna give it to you because you're gonna take it and do something good with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not gonna just look good in it. You're not gonna just drive in it. You're not gonna just live in it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna mm -hmm. take in people that need help. Yeah. You don't give folks a ride. Some people get a new car, they don't give nobody a ride. Come on now. <laughs> you can't get in my car. Don't, don't you know the Lord blessed me with that? <laughs> now, how are you going to say that out of the same mouth as I can't give you a ride because the Lord blessed me? Right, See, that's the stuff that makes folks, what, what, that church stuff. Yeah. You ever been around mm -hmm. people like, oh, yeah, that church stuff, I don't do that because them folks is crazy. You know why? Because somebody says something crazy like that, mm -hmm. and they make us all look like that. Right, right, right. That's why you got to know the God that you serve. Yeah. Come on yeah. now, yes. And so he wants you to be filled. Mm -hmm. He wants you to walk worthy. Right. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be fruitful. Yeah. Yes. He wants you to continue to increase. Yeah. Uh-huh. He wants you to be strengthened with all might. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally, he wants you to be thankful. Mm -hmm. This is what God says to this church. Yeah. Come on now. This is for you. Yeah. And if you weren't writing it down, you need to write it down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. Yes. You need to be, you need to be writing, writing it down. Yeah. He wants you to walk worthy. Mm -hmm. 
He wants you to be fruitful. Mm -hmm. He wants you to increase yes. in the knowledge of Him. Yes. He wants you to be strengthened. Uh huh. And He wants you to be thankful. Uh huh. If you do that, mm -hmm. by the time I see you again, come on now. There's going to be some powerful testimonies okay. of some stuff that God has been doing. Right. As a matter of fact, part of the testimony is that there's going to be a few, a few more filled seats. Come on now. Because what God is looking for is people that he can trust. Come on. He ain't going to send people in here if they're going to get beat up. Come on. He ain't going to send people in here if the folks that's in here aren't going to love them. Mm-hmm. Aren't going to be faithful to God. Mm-hmm. Because believe it or not, there's still a lot of work to be done here. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I know you feel like, well, we just... You know, just hanging in. No. Ain't no hanging in here. Uh -uh. That's not the God that we serve. Right. The God that we serve is a God that makes moves. Come on now. The Holy Spirit does a work. Come on. He doesn't just sit and wait. Yes. No, he's working. Yes. He's working and he's constantly moving and he's going to move in your life. Yes, yes. Some of you in this room, under the sound of my voice, you've been standing on the outside looking in. Yeah. You don't want to really jump in and be faithful. But God is calling you to be faithful. Uh huh. Because faithfulness and fruitfulness are kin to each other. Faithful people are fruitful. Come on now, yeah. You can't be consistent in something and not grow in it. Come on. God is asking for faithfulness. Uh huh. He's asking you to step up in areas. Come on now. Sometimes sometimes you come in and you think, oh man, yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah I'll give next week. You ever did that? Uh-huh. Oh, don't, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> don't be too honest. No. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give next time. And you know God put it on your heart. Mm-hmm. You know he already told you what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. You know you got it. And you'll act like you don't. You don't want to be like Ananias and Sapphira. Uh-huh. They went in there lying to the Holy Spirit. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Now, it's a good thing God ain't doing that. Because mm -hmm. that would scare the bejeebus out of somebody. Yeah. If they knew you had it in your pocket and you just dropped dead in the seat. Mm -hmm. But you know what God is asking you to do. Mm -hmm. You know what God desires from you. Mm -hmm. He's asking you to be all that you can be. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I know folks want to measure you in different ways. But you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Isn't that more important? Yeah. That I know what God is asking of me. Mm-hmm. And if I do what God is asking of me, he'll deal with other folks. Yes, right. yes, he will. Sometimes people have issues with the government. Mm -hmm. They have issues with leadership in the church. They have issues with all kinds of folks. Mm -hmm. And God says, you know what? That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you see that. You can point that out. But what am I asking you? You let me deal with them, and you be obedient. Mm -hmm. My wife said that this morning. Man, I just got, I just got to be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. There are things that He's asking me. Mm -hmm. And the people I see here today, you're here by your choice, but God knew you'd be here. Amen, amen. Yes, yes. And He had me standing here. Come on. Out of all people, mm -hmm. you did not know that on this Sunday that I would be here mm -hmm. saying what I'm saying. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So I would think that you would take that pretty seriously. Mm -hmm. yes. That God sent me here on the assignment mm -hmm. to get you going, mm -hmm. to get you running mm -hmm. at the level that you're supposed to. Some in this room, and I can feel it in my spirit, you're underachieving. Mm -hmm. you, know, yes. you know you got more. You know you can do more. Mm -hmm. You know God has called you to more. Mm -hmm. And you sit on the sideline mm -hmm. and you hesitate. You say, God, well, if this change, I'll do that. Yes. God is saying, no. You do what I tell you to do and I'll change that. Mm -hmm. You don't play that game with God. If this happened, I'll do, no. You say, God, I'm going to do what you asked me to do mm -hmm. because you asked me to do it. Come on. And you're going to deal with everything else. 
Yes. Yes. And I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing here, that's when things start shaking and start moving. Yeah. Is when you say, God, I'm going to do what you told me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this testimony. Years ago, me and my wife, we were going through a lot. Some of you that have been around for a while, you know the struggles that we were going through. And right before God restored our relationship, we both separately, we didn't know this until after we, you know, got things together. And we didn't know that we both had made a commitment to God that whether you restore my marriage or not, I'm going to serve you. That is the most powerful thing ever. You know why? Because at the end of the day, my commitment to her is bigger than just her. She's got God backing her up. Because that's who I made my commitment to. And God, and, and, and I've got God backing me up. Because that's who she made her commitment to. Mm -hmm. And so when we struggle, mm -hmm. well, this is about you, God. This ain't even about us right now. Mm -mm. We may be going through a real difficult time. But God, what you put together, mm -hmm. yes. let no man, right. not even me and her, mm -hmm. separate. Y'all yes. don't, uh -huh. don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. And when it gets to that point, can't nothing stop you. Mm -hmm. Can't nothing stop you. Mm -hmm. Because the stuff that the devil would use don't work no more. Because that's not an option. Yeah. <laughs> he can't use, oh, yeah, she, she's not making you happy. What? God makes me happy. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I made a commitment to him, and as long as he's on the throne, he can work on us. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. If it was just about me and her, man. Come on now. We'd be failing each other left and right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I know that God won't fail me, that the stuff I can't communicate to her, God can. Mm -hmm. And the stuff she can't communicate to me, God can. Yeah. Yeah. He'll speak to my heart, even when I'm way out there. Mm -hmm. Fellas, you ever just been out? You just, I don't want to hear it. None of y'all. Anyway. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, y'all know what? I'm tired of him. Not none of y'all. <laughs> Other people's wives. But you get to a place where, but God... I made a commitment to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when your commitment to God trumps all other commitments, mm -hmm. then God can work with that. And as long as your commitment is based upon what man does, what people do, mm -hmm. whew, that's a rough way to live. Yeah. Yeah. That is a rough way to live. Mm -hmm. Our church in Colorado, it's a growing church, it's a young mm -hmm. church, and we got a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. And we got some folks that if I look at their face too long, I get discouraged. Yeah. <laughs> I look at their body language too long, I'm, Lord, maybe you ain't called me to this. <laughs> and then I look over at another person, man, and they're just praying. I'm like, yeah, okay, God, yeah, you did. <laughs> man, it can't be about that. <laughs> it can't be about that. Man, I'll be an emotional wreck. <laughs> One second I'll be ready to do it, and the next second I'll be, I quit. And as a young pastor, I was going through that a lot. Mm -hmm. When people were happy with me, I was like, yeah, God was God's good. When people didn't, weren't so happy with me, because I couldn't believe that I'm just preaching the word and folks don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> that just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. I'm just preaching the word. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> well, because you won't let us do this and you listen. It's not me, it's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Right where you are. You would just bow your head. I want you to search your heart. And the things that I've been talking about today, if you know that something touched you, pricked you, and you said, ah, he was talking to me, he was talking to me, I want you to, I want you to stand up. You know that it's talking to you. And if that's you, you ask 
ask you to take one more step of faith. Come right down here with me. I want to pray for you. Mm -hmm.